Hello, my name is Dan Gamble and I am the Senior Conservator here at Jamestown Rediscovery. And today we're going to talk about window leads. Window leads are important because not only do they show that obviously they had glass here at Jamestown, but sometimes they hold a few secrets that we're going to talk about today. So what we're going to do is, is I'm going to show you how um, we clean them and conserve them and discover those little, little secrets that they provide. So now we're outside at the Memorial Church, which dates to 1907. We're going to look at some of this glass um, associated with the window leads that we're going to talk about. Uh, this glass is somewhat similar to mid-17th century glass that we found associated with, with Jamestown. And so if you look up here, you can see the panes of glass here are diamond shaped. And around the glass are these pieces right here. Well, this is lead. And this is exactly what's holding the panes of glass in place. Before we go back to the lab, I'd like to talk a little bit about how these windows are constructed. So what we have are the diamond-shaped window panes, around which are pieces of lead that were run through, like, much like a vise, and strung out. And they're H-shaped, so the glass itself sits within the lead and lead would come on the outside of the glass, and then all of which would be put into this frame. So archaeologically, what we find are usually broken bits of glass and small pieces of this window lead. And the window lead is great because as conservators, they'll come into the lab, we'll get them cleaned up, and then we can open the leads. And then we'll look inside the leads, and there's usually a surprise inside for us, which we're really excited about. We are inside the lab again, and now let's talk about a, a, a group of, of window leads that we found recently. Um, these window leads were found uh, west of, directly west of the church tower. And this is quite a few for uh, a normal context. Normally we might find one, two, or three pieces of window lead. Um, there's actually around 200 pieces of window lead uh, within this bag. Now, when we look at window leads, this is normally what we're going to see. We have a spine here in the center, and you can probably see a little bit, but there looks like there's an opening here. So the opening would go around the glass hold that pane in place, and then you've got a window. So what we as conservators will do is we'll take this piece, get all the white cleaned off, and what we like to do is soften it so that we can open up these window leads. Now, it's very uncommon for us to alter artifacts in any way when we get them from the field. But this is one that we're very interested in doing because, uh, as I said, mentioned earlier, inside some of the window leads, there will be a surprise for us that they're really interested in finding. So with this large bag of uh, window leads, this is really too many for us to do. So what we'll do is we'll take a sample of, of, of these window leads. I would rather prefer to do the ones that are single, uh, easier to open, but we also have numerous pieces that are like this, twisted and, and probably hard to open. So we'll do a sample, I don't know, maybe 50 to 100. It, it really just depends on what kind of things that we're finding on the inside. The first step in the process of conservation is to take before pictures of those artifacts. The window lead that I just showed you, we will get a before picture of that. The second thing we do is we record everything that we do to that artifact. Uh, for example, who the conservator was, the date that it was conserved, as well as the whole process throughout uh, conservation. The first step in the conservation process is we take the lead and put it in a bowl of disodium salt. We put it in the sodium salt because it does two things. One, 
it removes a lot of the heavy corrosion product that might be on a lead. But two, and most importantly, it makes the lead more pliable, more easily to maneuver, um, which is important because we want to open these up. So we leave it in the sodium salt for, it, it varies, it depends how much corrosion product on it, maybe an hour at the most. And then by that time, the corrosion product should be off and we can go ahead and open it up. So I have these three pieces of lead sitting in the sodium salt. And so they've sat in here for an hour, pretty loosened up, removed all the um, corrosion product. And uh, so now I'm gonna see if I can open some up and uh, we'll see what's inside. So a lot of times I'll just pick them out and a lot of times I'll just use my hands. It's usually easier than using tools. But sometimes the tools are necessary to, to get deep inside there to open them up. There we go. So because they've been soaking so long, um, they're soft and malleable, easy to open up. But there is some mortar and sand and so forth inside to, uh, that I still will need to clean out. Okay, so get this last bit of mortar brushed out of here. Um, so, um, now that I have this open, um, I can look at this and, and see what's inside. And that's really important because as this window lead was produced, they were run through vices where the glazier would run it through to create the H shape to put it around the window itself. As it ran through the vise or the roller, uh, it leaves uh, cane marks on there. But one thing that also leaves on there is the initials of the glazer who did the work, as well as the year that this was produced. And that's why we enjoy doing window leads so much is because they help us date features out at the site. So, for example, in some of the cases I've seen, say, WM, which would be the initials of the glazier, and then 1678, which is the year that it was produced. So right now I'm not seeing um, either of those, the date or the initials. But what I'd like to do is look at it through the microscope and see for sure. I see the mill lines left by the vise but no initials or date. Okay, so I have one more piece here that I'm gonna open up and see what's inside. Get it cleaned out a little bit here. Okay, so let me take this over and we'll look in the microscope and see if this one has a date on it. Okay, so we have a piece here and I'm looking under the microscope and see what we can see here. So this one actually has two letters in it, W and M. So what that indicates is that the glazier who rolled out this window lead um, these are his initials, WM. Unfortunately, there's no date on it or no year. Um, let me show you an example 
of one. Uh, this was done from the same feature or from the same square uh, earlier in the week. And this one, in fact, has the same initials as this one, but it also has a year on it, which is 1678. So more than likely, it was the same glazier with the same initials. Possibly the other pieces would have close to the same date on it, but, but this is what we're looking for. Okay, so today we've looked at window LEDs, both in windows and out of context from the archeological site here in the conservation lab. I've showed you uh, how we can serve them and what we're looking for, specifically initials or dates. And it's very exciting because we never know what we're gonna find in those window LEDs. Sometimes you might go three, four, 10 pieces and not find any initials or any date at all. Um, but we still have to look because these window LEDs can help date some of the features that they came out of. So the square that these window LEDs came out of with the date that's on it, uh, they, they match some of the artifacts that have come out of it initially. And so it's a, it's a good sign. So thank you for watching.